<laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Did you just hear me say so? <laughs> All right. Hey everybody. It's David. <laughs> Thursday nights. Here we go. Um, hey, let's see what's who's here. Oh boy. I just saw a great Facebook um, post by somebody who was there smelling fish <laughs> out of a can and they're all gacking. It's like, if you see that one on Facebook, you're going to love it. Anyways, um, welcome. Welcome for the Thursday night paint along guys. And um, I'm back, back from Minnesota uh, with my second shot. I'm all, all done with the shots and stuff. And, and let me just say, um, last week with the, with the tortoises, you guys did awesome. Oh my gosh, the, the, the turtles were amazing. Amazing, amazing turtles you guys did. Uh, please tell your friends about this um, on Thursday. Um, and it's free, you know, and, and tell them about my, the group and stuff so that we can all um, see what everybody else is painting and stuff. And you can always ask questions there. Remember, you always ask questions um, at the group, and I I usually look at all of them. I don't um, talk about all of them on <laughs> there. A lot of times I give advice if I see something that's kind of bad on some of the paintings, or some, not bad, but just a little um, advice and stuff, so that's pretty cool. Anyways, and also thank you anybody who has donated to the um, these classes and um, these uh, paint-alongs. Um, some of you have um, bought some of my paintings on my website, and some have just donated um some money and you can do that on my website so let me just show you where you can go on my website to do all that stuff and then you just go to my website here and um right here is um, where we get the de um, the paint alongs and you just press on this and somebody asked me how to download these is you press on uh, press on the link or press on the picture and it, it makes it really big and then you can download it off onto your um facebook or, i mean onto your t uh, tablet or your um screen and whatever I know that some people have been trying to um, print from their phone and and I'm not sure how to do all that stuff. I don't print from my phone, so I print from my I print from my computer, but um, get some get some young um, some of the young people to help you out with that one. Uh, those uh, anybody's having problems with anything in the computer, just get find some of those young people. They all know how to do all that stuff. And so let's see what we got here. We're going to go to our supplies just so all you newcomers can see where my supplies I'm using tonight. And so I always use Holbein paints and actually tonight we're just using one color. Meaning though that you can use one color and black or white. So I don't consider the black or white a color. Um, so we can um, use that in the color. So that's, that's still considered one color. So then I'm using Holbein watercolors. I'm using my brushes that you can also buy on my website. And I'm using Stonehenge Aqua papers again today. And I didn't use the transfer paper and I'm not using any masking fluid today. But let me go back here. I just want to, um, so <laughs> I've got this, I uh, got this beer today. It's called acid test. So acid test, um, can you <laughs> pass the acid test? Some kind of uh, plum ale and stuff. And it comes from Chicago. So we're going to cheers on that today, guys. So cheers, cheers. Whoa. <laughs> okay, that's interesting beer. <laughs> Plum, but a little, a little tart. So well, I'll, I'll let you know what um, paintbrush um, number that is. It, our beers get um, rated from 1 to 11 paintbrushes. So I'll, at the end, <laughs> I'll let you know how, how that beer is. Let's uh, I'll see who's here today. We got Pamela, Barbara, thanks for coming. Mary, Mill, Jill, Sue, Sonia. I know a bunch of, there will be probably a few more of you coming in. And I know there's 28 of you watching right at that, that moment. So say hello if you want. Uh, you don't have to. And also, if you want to ask questions, just put them on the chat on the side over there. And I will um, at, I will look at them and try to answer any questions once in a while I'll look up. All right. Let's get going into this value study and let's see what we're doing here. So this is the painting I did already today. Um, I, I have a class in Libertyville. Hey, Carol. Hey, Monica. So this is, um, I, I used a red, a um, sort of like a sepia red, um, like a burnt sienna kind of thing red. I, they call this um, light red in Holbein. And and so I used the red, like a, a terracotta red. But like I said before, I added black to the terracotta. And so that I don't consider it black as a color. I'm just darkening the terracotta. So tonight I'm going to use, I think, a purple. So I'm going to use a purple and a black. And I also use a little bit of white. And again, those are not colors. I don't think I don't consider those colors. So uh, I used to do this. I had done this before when I was in um, American Academy of Art and Irving Shapiro did it for us. And once a month, 
And so to, next week we're going to be doing two colors. The following week we're doing three colors and so on and so forth. And so we get the full color. <laughs> and so not like after three, we go right to full color. So actually three colors is kind of full color, but I'm going to show you how to um, get and combine some colors to make some really neat colors in there. So let's go to tabletop and get started here, guys. Uh, let me take another sip of this acid test. <laughs> I'm not sure this is going to be a good one. <laughs> Whoa, that's that's sour. <laughs> okay, so that's probably about a seven paintbrush on the air. <laughs> okay. Hey, Mark. Hey, Sue. Hey, Monica. Um, here we go. So, again, one color... Here we go, there's my finger. One color, and what you're gonna use is one of these colors, if you're using like a light color, like an orange or, or um, a yellow even, then you use black to darken it all the way down to black. And um, so it's just, I want you to realize that you don't have to think about the color in this one. Think about the values, it's very important. And every week that we add one color, like next week what we'll do is we'll go from a light a, um, a warm color and a cool color for two colors. So next week we're going to use two colors and then the following week we use tri colors, three colors. And so we'll probably, probably use a um, complements and then maybe an extra that's off the, off the edge of the side of one of those colors of the complements. And I'll show you how, how we'll do that. We'll do a couple of little things on that. But anyways, for tonight, just one color. But people were thinking that the one color had to be red and that's all you use for the dark. But I'm making it more so that you get the black. And so if I'm, I'm gonna use my purple here. Let me show you what I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna be using this purple here. So there's my purple, and um, I'm gonna add black to it to make it really dark. Uh, because I wanna get to a, I wanna get to a number 10 value, and you cannot get with a number 10 value with a red or an orange or a yellow. You can't get those colors to be at, uh, though we could do a high key painting, but tonight it's not about doing a high key painting. It's about doing the values from 10 to zero with one color. And um, so that you're not thinking about a color background being uh, cool or warm and the foreground being like, you're just thinking about the values throughout this entire piece. You're gonna be thinking about the values and also how you put the watercolor down. I'm very, always into how you're gonna put the watercolor down. So right now there's this shining light coming through here. And if you see my painting I did before, um, I, I kind of made the, the wagon kind of big and wide in my drawing. See, again, number one is drawing. Get your drawing right. It's so important to get your drawing right. My wagon is a little bit thick and a little bit wide in the back. Um, so I, I, I mis misplaced my drawing a little bit. But, um, and so I did get really dark here. And again, I used this color right here this afternoon. I used that color, but I put black into it. And so it's going to be a gray, I'll gray it down. You can do it so that the background maybe is that color and then make the foreground, make the background this color, I mean the purple, and then I can make the just all the dark purplish black in the foreground. And also if you need to have white in here to throw across to make those shiny, the sun like blasting through there, I think on this one, I'm going to make it not so blasty. <laughs> it's kind of, I'm not sure if that's a word, blasty, but it's not going to be blasting through here as much. All right. Well, Tina, oh yeah, I've, um, in my yard, I just um, showed on Facebook, I have three little pups, um, fox pups in my thing with a mom. And um, I have to see them. You don't see them all day, but you see them early, early morning and they're just hopping around there eating a rabbit. <laughs> uh, so maybe next week I can get some shots of, um, next week when we do two colors, it's not gonna be this painting. Um, just by way, we're not, I just, somebody asked that in class that are we going to do the same painting four times and then just add color to it? No, no, we're not going to do that. That's what we did at American Academy, but I'm not going to do that to you. I don't want to do this painting four times actually. <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll find another, uh, find another painting. Maybe it'll be a fox. Maybe I'll get a good shot of those little guys. So here we go. So let's do the background. Well, let's get this one out of the way. So let's go with the background first. Of course, we want to go with the background light dark. And so let's say you're using the background color white and um, it's already the paper's white. So what do you do? Well, you don't touch it. <laughs> you basically leave it white of the paper. So I'm just gonna wet the whole background like I mostly do. You guys notice that I always, I want soft edges. And I'm gonna pretend, let me just really quickly put my um, Nita River eraser across these, across the, I noticed that my pencil lines got really kind of thick. So 
roll, make your um, make your um, thing a, a, a like a, a roller, and just take it across your pencil line, and it takes the graphite up. But don't do it where I wet it. I'm not going to do it there because I already wet that part. I just want to get some of this off of there a little bit from the graphite. Even though we're going dark, it probably doesn't matter. But just to show you a way of getting the graphite off, but still keeping the line. You're going to pretend like the horse and the buggy are not even there. You're going to pretend like you're doing the background all the way through. And um, you guys with the tortoise last week, my gosh, I, I'm just amazed. At, uh, every one of them, every one of them was just amazing. Um, I'm, I'm glad you're learning a lot. Um, thank you for um, coming by and watching because you guys are doing great jobs. So nice. As a teacher, that's what I'm here for, is just to make you guys paint really good. And man, you guys are getting some great, unbelievable stuff coming out of you. All right, so it's all wet. I just evenly wet it. And now I'm going to go in with this purple, um, permanent violet. And there's a little bit of um, brilliant violet in here too. So it's basically two different violets, but together as one, you know, I'm just going to I'm just going to try to go in just to the purple. <laughs> you don't have to be so strict on with it. You know, I'll, if you have like another, it is purple. It's just a different shade of purple. So you can do that. But though I don't want you to use like a purple and then a red or, and then a blue or something like that. I want you to just use one color on this one. And so I'm going in here now. I'm just going to get this little tree. And I noticed that in a photograph, this is really light here, but it gets a little bit darker. And it is hard edge up here, but I always like to get a little bit of the, the um, soft edge first. I can always get hard edges easy afterwards. It's the soft edges that are the hard part. So try to really try to get your soft edges first and try to get as, them as good as you can. And then later on, you can always put in the hard edges. Those are the easy edges to get. Now, this is uh, there's a little bit of like steam coming off the horse over here. I don't think it looks that good in the picture, so I'm not going to put it in there. I didn't hear. Um, the steam looks kind of like, you know, what is he on fire, the horse? <laughs> so, no, he's not on fire. So, we're, I just made him just the, the back of the horse. I didn't put the steam in. So, I'm just going to go right through him. Right through this guy. Right into the background. Leaving the background light. Now, I noticed that I have a little bit of schmutz here on the dirt, <laughs> on the paper. So, I'm going to put a little bit of purple there just because I can cover up the schmutz. The dirt. So I'm going to go in here. Can I come in here now? You're wondering how am I going to get those light rays in there, right? I bet you're wondering that. And those will be either taken out when it's dry or in a second I'll show you how I can then um, pull out with my brush. I'll pull out my brush and I'll take it out to the purple again. But first let me just get some more of this darker colors here for the trees and such. And a couple of the uh, students today made it just nothing like the picture of the background in this photo, in the photo here. They made it look nothing like the background there. And that's fine with me. I'm, you know me. I don't, I don't care if you want to go and do your own thing where you want to make the background just maybe even drippy or whatever. Make it whatever you'd like. If you're the artist, you do what you want. Now, don't go into that red. <laughs> I just showed that to you. This is one color. I'm just going to dab here a little bit, here and there. Also, ask questions. Remember, ask your questions. And uh, <laughs> my horse, uh, um, I pretty much copied the horse, so um, I can't make up a horse out of my head, which is one of those things. I, I just And if you, if you notice in here and in here, I don't have legs on the horse. So those are the things I have problems with. So there's no legs. There's kind of an image, a little bit of a ho um, horse's legs, but... I really don't put legs. I don't know how they work. They just, they bend all over the place. So I don't know. It's one of the things I don't really draw that much. And it's always been, it's been a joke, running joke in my classes that I can't teach you how to do a horse, but you know, that's, that's teaching. Cause you really have to know a horse. You have to know how those legs work. And when he trots or runs or walks, you know, what, what, what is he doing? And so his legs are bent all over the place with that each one. So here a little bit more purple back here. Now if I get it too dark back here, I gotta make sure this is less than the, the card. The card is gonna be what really comes forward because of how dark it is. Not about what color it is, though I will maybe put some really bright purple in him on the edges. And I will even maybe put this time put in, which I didn't do here, is put in some white and do some little highlights on this wagon, which I didn't do this afternoon, but 
I got a brand, I went to Goodwill today, I got a bunch of new new towels here, and so um, they're like a dollar, dollar ninety nine, $2 a, um, a towel here. So get yourself towels. It's just so nice to be able to rest anywhere. And so I'm going back here again, and I'm going slow because once I get this done, we're never touching the background again. It's just that simple. You know, it's kind of simple. It's a really simple composition. The darks are in the front, these lights are in the back, and there's, it goes from dark to light, basically, the whole thing. Now, let me show you how to get the, um, the rays in there. So I'm just going to wipe it down on the paper towel here, on the blanket. I'm just going to pull out. See, I'm just going to take this and pull out the light. Now you got to remember, it's going to be about 20% lighter, this thing, so um, watch that you know that how much lighter it's going to get. So there's a little bit of... I gotta make it a little bit darker so I can pull something out here. If it's not dark enough, then you, you, there's nothing to pull out. There's no pigment to pull out to get back to the white of the paper. So here we go. We're putting that in there. And we can put it across him. And I noticed that in the picture, um, there's nothing in here in this area. I'm gonna maybe put a couple of little trees in here very lightly. Again, that way, when I have stuff in here, like little trees and such, I can pull them out and actually show a little bit of the, um, the rays of light. Now this is starting to dry a little bit, so I'll get a little watermark, but that's okay in this area. So it's a little bit harder edged, but now watch this. So now I have, uh, now I am taking, drying off my brush and then I just pull and don't pull it all the way across there because then it's going to be dark again. So we just want to, I'm just pulling in here a little bit, pull out. I let the brush absorb the pigment again. And if you're using a paper that absorbs too much, of course, it's a little bit harder because it's sitting into the paper. But the Stonehenge is a little bit um, tougher paper. I mean, it's not tougher paper. It's it's paper that it sits on top a little bit more. It doesn't soak in as much as like an Arches does. And so I'm, I can easily pull out some of the pigment. And I can also use white. Like if I feel like I need to get a little bit of white in there, that's fine. You know, I'm just going to pull this way a little bit. Pull this way a little bit. And also when it's dry, you can do the same thing. Here, I'll scumble a little bit here just to, like there is some leaves here and such. Keeping it pretty light. And if I do something really light here, even if it's hard edged, it will look soft because it's not that much contrast. Always remember, if you don't want a hard edge to look hard, use a very low contrast between the light and the dark. All right, so now we're going to go and I'm just going to kind of go down here and get some more of this, this purplish color. And it's light. I'm still working my lights. These are my lights. See how nice it is? You don't have to think about what color you're using. It's either purple or black. <laughs> I'm just making it blacker. So it's only one color. So it's, you should be thinking about the values. It's all about, this whole project is about learning how to use and watch the values. And so next week when we do two colors, of course, we'll get cool and warm probably. And then we'll do a little bit with the color, but it's still more about the values. And it's always about the values in the end. We want to always watch out the values. And so I'm just putting a little bit on the road here, little light colors. And so basically I'm making my background more colorful than my foreground, which is the purple, but it's just, the, it's going to be purple, but it's going to be purple black as it comes forward. And this over here, I'm going to go into this one. This is dry, a little, a little bit, a little bit drier, make that tree a little bit darker, a little bit harder edged. And now what I want to do is I'm going to take this and do the street and I want to kind of have some texture in there. So I'm just going to like spatter a little bit. Oh, look how much fun that is. Oh, yeah, I love spattering. That's why I have an apron on. I don't have to worry about anything there. And I'm just kind of hitting on my finger. You can hit, hit it on another brush. You know, just getting a little texture in there. And I'm not putting in the shadowing yet. Uh, well, I'm putting in shadows, of course. But I'm not putting in, like, the shadows from the, from the, from the horse or the carriage. That's we're just going to leave and... I'm still going to go through there a little bit. There's nothing really light on the carriage. It's pretty much like a silhouette. So let me let me put this a little bit light. How about a little swipe of light through there? Does that look anything good? Hmm. Maybe. But we're going to come back down in that dark anyways. 
So here we're gonna go a little bit. Let's make some more weeds. Tap, tap, tap for texture. That's another way. Come on, guys, questions. I, I love questions. Love to answer your questions. <laughs> I mean, you guys are getting so good that you probably can do this with your eyes closed now, right? I mean, you guys are really, I'm, I was absolutely shocked with some of the beautiful, all of the beautiful um, tortoises. Man, oh man. Like when, you, when your students are doing better than you do, that's a pretty good sign that you're <laughs> doing a pretty good job teaching. It's very cool. All right, so let me um, let me think. What would, so what's next? So let's go in here and let's get, start working our darks. That's all my lights. I did all my lights, and I've um, got some of my darks started, but um, or like the middle tones. Let me get a little bit right here. Nice thing is, is that my black and my purple are right next to each other, so I can just go across both of them, and it picks up picks up a little bit of purple, picks up a little black. I'm gonna put a little bit of that in here. Spatter again a little bit. Tap another brush. Good way of getting texture. Just tap downwards if you want it straight down. If you want it across, you can tap it across it. It all depends on how you want to tap and spatter. This is all about the texture too, because again, we don't have color to help us out with things to make it look like a beautiful, colorful watercolor. No, we're worrying about the value and we're also worrying about the texture. How are we gonna get a certain kind of texture? What's, what, what is cool in watercolor that you can show? You know, what is it that, and one thing that's really cool is when things, when watercolor does its own thing, when you kind of let it go and let it bleed, let it just do its little, little things that watercolor does so well. All right, so here now let's go in here and work our way from from the background to the foreground. This tree right here is a little bit darker, and that part is almost drying. Lynn wants to do a wolf, wolf or a fox. Yeah, we can. I'm gonna look into it and see if we can find something, or if I can take pictures. It's always, you know, it's it's very important to make a I, for you guys here. I always try to do the best when it comes to giving you some really good fo or really good um, photos that we can really work well on and designing them is, is probably the toughest thing too. And, um, and how do you know what's a good composition? Well, it's a good light and dark, a good light and dark pattern, a simple light and dark pattern. This is a very simple pattern. You have your darkest dark right smack in the middle and really this around it is middle tone but this is the darkest, so it's like a dark, and the middle tone can always be um, presented as a, a light also. It doesn't matter which way it goes. I always think black and white. So the white is over here, white is over here, and this is the black. And so what we do is then the middle tone is pretty much for this will be more in the background. So it's more of a light. And um, then here we have a little bit dark, and it comes right into the thing. So we got the front, and it weighs pretty well together. I mean, it just feels balanced. And so... Look at it and think of it as like a, a balance. Does it feel like there's just black and white everywhere where there's nothing, you know, where there's no place for your eye to stop and it's just so confusing. So if it's really simple, simple, big, big area of dark, big area of lights, that's how you show your good patterns. Any painter, any painting out there that you really love I, that works that way. I just looked through the AWS catalog. They just sent it today from to me and, um, or what, I think I got it yesterday and what they was looking at some of the really beautiful the ones that got accepted into um, AWS um, show and boy those paintings if you look at them the compositions I know a lot of them are very complicated with a lot of things in it very picturesque and very photographic but if you look at the whole if you squint your eye and look at the values a lot of times you'll have big compositions of light and dark even with all the millions of things that are happening in that shot in those in those in the complicated shot it could be, and usually is, where the values are very similar and very put together as one thing. I'll maybe have to do a video on that one day and just show you guys what I'm talking about. It's a little bit hard to explain and talk. You have to show a little bit of like what I'm talking about because sometimes there's, you have a lot of subject matter in, in a photo, but because how it's laid in and where it's at in the photograph, it's not as complicated as you think, the, the composition anyways. Now let's go in here, do a little bit, a couple of these dark, those are almost too dark. So let's get a little bit more purple. I want to keep the background a little bit more purple than the foreground. I want the foreground to be a little bit more into the black, into the dark. And so there's also a trunk right here of the tree. 
kind of comes down. Now I can make this trunk of the tree as dark as the, excuse me, as dark as the horse and the rider because then they'll come forward. You got to think, where is this tree placed? Where are these leaves? They are in the back and really this is almost too dark, but it's going to dry lighter. You're going to see it's going to dry a lot lighter than it is. And so let's put some, and I'm just taking the side of my brush and kind of scumbling. Scumbling is where I just take the tip here and I just kind of barely rest it on the paper and it gives me whatever hits it kind of gives me some leaves. I'm just give them some leaves. And if you want, you can also spray it with your little spray bottle, which I notice I don't have one with me at the moment. So you can always do that and also get some soft edges because you don't want all of them to be So I'm just going to use my brush, soften some of the edges with a little bit of water so that not all of them are hard edged. Even though their contrast is not that great. So don't, I'm not worrying too much about that. As it comes down, it kind of bleeds right into the foreground here. I want to keep some of the soft edges back here from what I got in the first wash because soft edges are just so watercolor. It's a it's a watercolor thing. And then also going over that made me go over my light, my light that I just put in took out. So I have to go over that again to just get rid of the the light beam. I want to make sure that light beam is still there. Now here, I get a little bit dark. All right, so here we go up. And so you were saying, I was saying about the composition, the way to do that also to see how, how complicated the um, composition is with the lights and darks, if you take your photograph and then make it black and white, like don't look at it with the color in your camera. There's always a setting. A lot of times you can, you can just turn your photograph to black and white. And you can see, and you also can make a contrast to see which is more. Is there more light or dark? Is it all together? Is it more like a, where everything is just all over dark and light and dark. And so that's hard then to paint if it's all light and dark everywhere. But this is just pretty much the light in the background and the foreground. And a little bit over here is your darkest darks. And look at this little watermarks I've got in here. They look like little grasses now. And so I'm just going to keep that there. Isn't that cool? How you can just get that. <laughs> That's what I love about watercolor. It does a lot on its own. I'm a very lazy painter. And so look at, it just, it does it for me. I always say watercolor is, is the easiest because it does so much for you. You just let it go, oh, put water there and it's just bleeding up and look at it, it made, made some nice weeds there for me. <laughs> so I'll go here. There's a tree that's going to be detailed later. Now I noticed that um, it's starting to get to where it's a little damp right here. And if you want to get some watermarks or watermarks are good for when it get texture. So I'll just take water and I will spray water on it and you get these little dots. And if you can see a little closer, I'll show you a little closer. You get these little dots. And I just, what I did is I put water on there and here you can see the drawing, how the drawing is still showing through. So I don't have to worry about that. And those are the little water droplets. I just tapped water. And so it gave a little texture there. You can do that kind of thing too. And see, so yeah, I'm just stalling basically because now I'm, I'm ready for my <laughs> dark and it's still not dry yet. So I'm just going to wait a little bit longer and actually, no, it's dry. So come on, ask some questions, guys. I know you're all really good now, but ask me how the weather was <laughs> at least. <laughs> Here, I'll say, cheers, cheers, everybody. <laughs> what are you guys drinking, anyways? Wow, that's sour. <laughs> That's a, the sourest beer I think I've ever had. And I'm talking like lemon sour. <laughs> wow, well, wow, well, wow, well, wow. Well. It's always this interesting beer I've got going here. All right, so the song enough here. Now let's go into our carriage right away. Let me go into the guy. Basically, I'm going to go get the guy here. So... You guys still watching, guys? <laughs> All right, just 32 of you. So I guess somebody somebody has a question. Come on. <laughs> so here we go. We're going to put on a hat on this guy. And this is dry enough here. And you notice how dark that is? I'm going to be using almost just black with a little bit of purple. And I can always put water and I also can uh, make it lighter. But I, I want it to be really dark at first. And then there's no... This time I'm not going to be like dumping some color into it because you won't see it. I'm not dumping like I normally do. I, I, I float colors, other colors into that. And this is one time I'm not doing that because it is just a one color. 
And so I could put some purple in there, but um, I, that's when I may do that in a second. But I'm just kind of because it's the purple itself is pretty much dark too, so it's not gonna not gonna change that much. So I'd have to pull some of it out of there. So that's what I'll do here. I'll just take it and I'll pull it a little bit this way, and I'll pull it to where you can see a little bit of purple. And you notice how I don't do just the guy without the carriage. He goes right into the carriage. And um, I'm just going to go in here and get these hard edges that I want. It's hard edges that I want now. So that's going to want to dry. Make sure it's dry right there. And I know they're in the photograph. If you look, you can probably see a bunch of stuff in here. But I don't want you to see that stuff. And that's how I left it really dark for my students. Because as soon as I let you see what's in there, you're, you're going to start thinking about all those little things in there. You're going to try to put them in. And yes, you can put them in. But... I want you to put them in after, after you do this big wash. And you go in there and do the big wash first. And I'm gonna like put in like maybe the lighter color first here and then maybe dump in some darker color. Get the hard edges first. And there's a bunch of, there's, I don't know if there was drawers or something in this box over back here, but it was just a little bit different. I didn't know, quite know what it was and, and it didn't, I tried to tell my students it doesn't matter. And if you can't see it in the photograph, then and then the photograph still looks good, right? It still looks okay. So then just fake it. <laughs> just do the same thing you see in the photograph and fake it like that. Like the legs, I can't see the legs on the horse. Um, thank goodness that I couldn't see him because I can't draw. <laughs> so, so just don't put them in. You know, just um, put some lines in there and make it dark and all dark in this area right here. The only part I do want to show is like right here. There's a little bit of light on that that's holding the carriage to the horse and this wheel i know is up here but i'm just going to put right over the wheel because if i have to start looking at each one of those little things going around it that's too much so i'm just going to kind of play it lighter to dark light to dark and then this area worry about the high knee from this horse and then we'll worry about the outer edge right here but this is dry this is wet right here so i can't do anything right there i'm going to go back down to the carriage here there's an axle and I'll put that in there that I know for sure is right there. And so I can fake that in, just put the axle and I can make that pretty dark. Again, it's so easy when you don't have to think about what your, what color to choose or what you're doing. This is just look for the values, look for the values. This assignment is about values. I want to see this thing be a perfect values between the lights and the darks. That's what this assignment is about. It's all about the values. Look at the values in the picture, and that's how I give you a black and white. If I give you the color, and um, actually it was pretty, it was pretty um, black and white kind of. There was not much color in this photograph. So let's see, what kind of black do you use? I use a called a peach black. It's called peach black, so it's a little bit warmer black, um, and it's not gritty. It's um, it's just a black like, and it's it's the pigment like any other pigment in there. It's just solid black, and it's a little bit warmer black. But like I said, I'm adding purple to it, so it becomes a purple black. And um, that I do normally anyways. I always kind of use the color black if I'm going to get something really dark. It's just, to me, that's not a color. It's just, it's the color that I'm using is purple, and I'm making it a dark purple by adding black to it. I know that's kind of something they didn't teach us. They wanted us to mix our blacks in school, and um, which is which we did. But I just find this to be a lot easier and for me to teach you to mix the blacks, then you're just be thinking about mixing the blacks. And it's not really a true, well, it gets really dark, depending on like if you take a phthalo blue and a, a lizard crimson, it gets very dark like a black. But that's, it depends on how much lizard crimson or blue you put in there, it becomes a cool black, warm black, and that's all I'm doing. I'm taking my black and I'm adding red to it, basically, or my purple. And so I'm making it a black that has a color. So kind of the same thing, just in reverse. I don't start out with colors. I put colors in at the end. So here I'm just putting in this right away, putting in the wheel and I'm using my rigger brush because I can handle this one and get really fine, long. And a rigger brush is nice. Why? Because it holds a lot of water and pigment. And so if you added one of those really short pigments or um, bristles, it just holds so much water and some of the things so you had constantly going back in there. Where here I can do a bunch of these wheel spokes and I can get them, look at how many I can do. There's so much paint in here, I can do them almost all. Look at that. 
I must did them all. Here's a little break or whatever on there. Just kind of faking. I don't know if that's a break or not, but <laughs> it is now because <laughs> I said it was. And so you're going down here. See how you can just rotate that brush and you can do detail with this brush. Nice. Now this is, make sure that drawing is right and see if you can't follow it because a bunch of us in class are having a hard time. It is hard to do the wheels perfect because the oval is so, you know, and, and the spoke is, should be evenly separated, but, you know, it can be off a little bit. I mean, believe me, you can have it off a little bit. Here's the back, the front wheel. And, um, You'll see later on, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna go over this with some of the black, dark colors, so it, it'll look fine. It's gonna be a little bit blurry in some spots because I'm gonna go over it. And it'll still look fresh enough and um, it'll look fine. There's the two wheels. And see how easy it is? I mean, I don't have to think about what's in there. I'm just getting this whole cart. You know, that's so neat that I don't have to think about much. <laughs> And so, let's see, one color painting. How can you make it interesting besides values and textures? Well, you really can't. <laughs> That's it. All you have is values and texture. Um, and then the scene itself, depending on what the scene is. So um, if you have a, a boring scene, of course, it's going to be a boring painting <laughs> because you can't add the color. Though I've, if I noticed that a lot of the, uh, the painters out there now, the, um, the, the professionals out there who are winning all the awards, like um, the one artist Z, I, forget, I don't know how to pronounce this, but if you look at it, they use a lot of um, neutral tints. And that's another thing you use. You can use neutral tint as your, as your dark. And there's a lot of people are using grays, grays and stuff in their paintings. And I saw in the AWS um, catalog, I noticed a bunch of them that use just basically black. And some of them are just black with maybe one color. So it's like two colors, but the... Um, They'll put the one color in there with it, where it's like this, and then they'll put an opposite color. Like they'll just put a bright red in there, or maybe a yellow since this is purple, and then you get a really beautiful looking um, compliments to help complement each other out. So now I'm going in here to do the horse because I think this is dry now. Yep. So let me get my smaller round brush. Uh, let me get my get my flat brush. I love my flat flat brush. That's got some white in it. I noticed. All right, so. And, you know, this is to teach you. So, I mean, it's not so much that you, you do this to your painting each time because you just want one color. You always want to probably use full color, but this is a great way of teaching you how to look and see the values. If you feel like you just don't want to do a black and white and you want to add two colors, go. I, I mean, you do whatever you want. But this is just my lesson. This is what we did at American Academy. For every month we do this, the first week we do one color, the second week we do two colors, the third week we do, and that way we do the same painting though. We do the same painting with that. And so if you want to try that, that really shows you then how to do it. But um, I get bored if I'm doing the same painting over and over again. So I didn't, I didn't make you do that. I just made you use one color. And even though um, they didn't let you use black, so you just used a dark color like a Prussian blue or a a burnt sienna, I mean burnt umber or something like that, we would use in the school, we, we weren't allowed to use black, so we would just use a dark color like a burnt umber, which kind of has a really dark uh, dark color to it, and so maybe it even itself has black in it. <laughs> so this is the little stick that's holding the horse, and then I'll, I'll put in the, the reins, or here's maybe a tail, and now here's a bunch of stuff happening here, and so what do I do? I just kind of go in there and just fake what's in there because I don't know what's in here. <laughs> I'm just going to put this in. And now this part, there's part of this that's a little bit lighter. So I noticed I didn't do that light enough. So I'm going to pull out again. You can always pull out color after you put it down. You know, you just wipe it out. You watch this. It's still wet here a little bit. So I can just wipe this out. And so I'm just wiping out a little bit. Nobody says that you cannot wipe out. You can wipe out and you can put in and you can scrub out too. There's times that you can scrub out things. If you feel that you didn't get it right. Um, I know somebody on the tortoise didn't have their head um, of the tortoise big enough. So I said scrub out the top. You can scrub out. There's nothing that says that you can't scrub out. Here I'll put a leg kind of, I think kind of a leg. <laughs> Look at that leg. Ooh, is that a cool leg or what? <laughs> I'll be putting a... a um, Let's put a little bit of hoofs on them. Maybe, maybe that'll make it look better. Wow. I really don't know how to paint the horse's legs. 
Uh, so Carol wants to know what I mean tint. A tint of color is just a lot of water, not much pigment. When you're tinting, you're it's a lot of water with a little bit of um, little bit of pigment. That's a tinting. A wash is when you use a lot of paint um, with a lot of pigment, and you're getting a lot of pigment down. But a tint is just a really light wash. Here go over here. And you notice how I'm making it really dark this up here. I'm making this super, super dark over on this side. And I'm not making it as dark back here because, why? Because it's farther back. I'm still going to go up in the tree up here later on. But right now I'm just getting in here and getting the wheels. And we'll get this tree and stuff like that. But that's still wet up there. So, But now this is dry so I can go right in here and just get my wheels. And you notice I'm using a flat brush, but the flat brush, if you use it sideways, is very sharp. It's almost like a round brush. From the side, like if I look at it right from the side now, look at how sharp that brush is. It looks like a round, as a matter of fact. As I turn it, look at how fat it gets. You know, So think of the brush like that. And if I, I can make it really thin by turning it sideways, when I get down here, I'm just gonna spin it and go back up this other way. This is the little hub. I always put the, I always I kind of put a hub in first. And then I can even do this where I can pull out a little bit of the, because I think there's a wheel up there you can see a little bit, but I'm going to put in those details later. And the back of the horse we'll put in with a little harness. Here's a little bit of a rope. Now let's put in the spokes of the wheel. Try to do it and hopefully you have your drawing you can still see. So just copy right over your, over your pencil lines and that should be fine, right? Because they already put them in there with the pencil lines. So... That's where they are, so just paint right over them. And that's the front wheel. And make sure that the back wheels, I noticed a couple of people today didn't have the back wheels farther down than the front wheels. Front wheels are a little bit higher, so they're not all even. And also, in the photograph, you've got some of the, um, let me just show you really quick, let me just do this real, wheel real quick, and then I'll, I'll show you something about the shadowing underneath. And most people were thinking that I should do the shadowing first before I do the wheel, but I want the wheels to be kind of blurry because they are moving, right? This, this guy's moving. So being having your wheels blurry is not a bad thing. And so if I go over it with a, with a wash, it will look blurry because I'll pick up some of the pigment, but that's okay because then it'll look like it's moving. A little trick. And so, so far, that's pretty good. Now, this is dry. Let me put it in a little whip right away since I got this in my hand already. So this is a one shot deal. I'm gonna stand up for this one. I'm just going to go in here and one shot. There's his whip. I don't know, is that what they call those? A whip? <laughs> and then here's the guy. Since we're using my, my rigger brush, I'm going to come over here and do some of these trees, light trees here. There's a couple with the branches coming up and they're kind of in the foreground here. I'll make them light. I'm not going to make them too dark, so I'm going to use a little bit more purple with a little bit more water. That's how I make it light. I'm putting a tint on. Remember, a tint makes it a little bit more water. A tint is more water. Doesn't make it dark. It's not a wash. A tint is just a light color. And so there's a lot of water in a tint with hardly any pigment. Hello, Becky from the Morris um, Watercolor Guild. I miss you guys too. Uh, I've gone there every year for, I don't know how many years that we've been, I've been going there. Um, hopefully I can come back soon. I noticed all my students in my class today had had their shots. Everybody had two shots. So we're all good in my class in Libertyville. So if anybody from my Libertyville class wants to come back, we're all vaccinated. We're all, we all have our shots. We still wear a mask though. We still wear a mask in, 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 in class. We don't want to, you know, it's 95%, but we just want to make sure that everything's good. Well, so now we're going to get, let me just explain this shadow here, because let me just do a couple more here. Little, little, little leaves here, little little dots for a couple of leaves in there. Oops, sorry, my hand was in the way. And so we're doing this. All right, and so there we have, uh, let's put another little branch in here, I think. And let's put some branches up here. 
I mean, I'm doing my, basically I'm doing all my details now because all my dark and my lights, my lights were all done. Now I'm doing my darks and now I'm doing my details. And so those details, and if you want to put like a fence in here or something, or if you feel that's not enough in there, you can put a fence in there with a little barbed wire. That's cool too. You're going to put a little bit more of the trunk in. You're the artist. I always tell my students that, you know, you're the artist. What's in the photograph, um, you know, is fine. But that's just a reference for you to then take it farther. Like here, I'm going to put his hair. Maybe his hair is blowing in the wind a little bit here. Now for the shadows. Okay, the light's coming from this way. And a couple of students had, and in the photograph, the, shad the shadows are kind of coming from the wheels. And they're kind of going like this downwards. They're kind of going like this. And let me just show you what happens when you do that. So when it goes down and it's going away from you, it kind of looks like the, the, the hill or the road is at an angle then. So if you do that to all of them. So what I'm going to do instead is just bring it more straight across. So I'm just going to wipe that a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the shadow. And first I'm going to do an overall shadow because it'd be like the sun is up here. Even though it's over there, it's above us. So there would be a light, there would be a dark down underneath the, underneath here. And so I'm just going to take it across and I'm taking it straight across because then the road looks very straight. And a couple of other had done like the photograph and it looks like then you have a, you're a little bit on a hill. And so I just said, sometimes you just have to do that, even though it's, it's physically right what they did. It is just exactly what is in the photograph, but I took it and made it straight. And that way I know for sure that the line looks like he's on a straight road. Like it's not tilted and it's not curved or anything. If you wanted to then put like a puddle of water in here, you can also do that. You can just blend this all together. And I'm going to put a little stripes in here coming back, like where the wheels had kind of, because this is um, shadowed. It's really strong light hitting here. And so we're getting all this little shadow. And I know it's not as exciting as like a full color. Again, this is not, this is for teaching purposes. And a lot of times... You can then put a color in afterwards. I like can put more of a color in there, but I just want you to understand how important it is to get the values and learn how to get the values right. And this is one way I was taught at the American Academy of Art how to do it. So I'm doing it for you guys. And so then next week we do two color. I'm not sure again what it's going to be that we're doing in two colors, but it'll be something. <laughs> of course, it's something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to do a little more spattering. I love spattering. And then I'm going to put a few more trees, I think, in here. They're going to be light to show you. I love to spatter. And I just take my brush. And I'm going to do some spattering across like this. Tap. I don't know if you can see that. Let me put it a little bit higher so you can see what I'm doing with my brushes here. I'm taking this one as the one I tap on. So I'm going like this and tapping. And then I just point it and then take it forward. Now you can also go over it and then kind of scumble a little of that to make it a little more texture. I can put it in the trees. Oh, there's nothing in left in there. I can put a little leaves in there. Just, oh, I gotta bring it down again. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, so now this side seems pretty empty, right? I mean, it looks pretty like, what's going on over here? How come it's, I mean, it's blasting light. But there's almost seems like I have this moved over a little bit more than the photograph. So I'm going to make a little bit of these trees. Not quite as dark as this one. I'm going to put a few over here. And then I'm going to go in here and get all the little fine, fine details. And so let's go in here. I'm going to put in a little tree. Let's get the smaller round brush. I'll use this one. I'm going to use this very light. I don't want to make this dark because if I make this dark, then that's going to just bring too much over on this side. But I think I'm going to do a little bit in here and put a tree in here. And then I'm going to wipe out some of the the lights coming through there. I, I mean, in fact, I'll even do this, make it look like the shining lights coming through that area. Just some kind of tree, maybe a pine tree here. And see how light it is? And the Making it that light gives gives the look that it's a um, soft edge because it's not contrasty. Here I can put some more um, fo foliage and foliage in and stuff. A little bit darker, like there's something on the side of the road, like a little, I'll even scumble a little bit. Use the side of my brush to get texture, like there's some kind of weeds in there. 
See, this is rough paper, so if you take your brush across it quickly, you'll get a texture. I can tap it a little bit with my finger up and down. Put a couple of little lines in there for like stalks of something. Because there's gonna be lines like you know the little through here. This shouldn't take you as long as like a color one also because you're going faster because you're you're not really you don't have a lot to think about you're just basically doing one color and so you don't have to worry and you just go right over things and here make it a little bit darker right by where the wheel starts the, the shadows and then actually I probably should let those shadows be a little bit longer that they come out over here and see any questions. Uh, so Mill um, says, I thought you were going to do the same one with colors next time. No, we're not going to do that. We're, we're going to, um, that's what we had done in our schools. We're just going to do two color. Uh, you could do this one again in two colors on your own. Um, that's, that'd be actually a good exercise for you guys. If you want to do this, um, do it and do it the same scene in two colors next week. Um, I'm going to do a different one. Just uh, because I get bored with the same scene. <laughs> but you can do that. Definitely, you, you, you learn a lot by doing the same scene then with color. And then, and then you can do it in three color. And then in full color. This is what we did at schools. But I, I don't want to um, paint this four times. That would be like a whole month of this painting. And I, I want to kind of get into the next thing. I guess it's not the best way, attitude for a teacher. But I think you guys can do it. You know, do it on your own. Because... Um, I'm going to show you how to do a different subject matter with the, with the two color and, and so it'll be also just as good. Let's see any other questions? Join your line. Let's, uh, all right. Lots of information. I'm glad we got a lot of information. Shadows under wheels look great. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Carol. So now it's here how that has a little bit of a reflection. So I'm going to soften that edge a little bit. And what I said I was going to do also on this one is I'm going to use a little bit. You know what? I'm going to look at this. This still seems a little empty in here. I'm going to just put a real light, a light tree here. I don't know. I just felt like it's really, really empty. But it's really light. And so it, it'll just be like it's in the background and it's being lit up really light also. And I can get, watch this, I'm going to take my flat brush. How much time do we have anyways? Oh boy, we have a lot. Not too bad. So we're going to go through here. I'm just going to rub out a little bit. Get a little bit more of the, I'm taking my brush, just rubbing. Take my paper towel. Just dab there. Get some more of the light shining through. So I can just rub out and then just blot it. Blot it with your paper towel. It gives you a little bit of the, the shininess and stuff. Oh, I went right over my, right over his pole there. That's okay, because then you just go right back here, put that back in. Now, what I didn't do that I didn't do this I know is put white in some of these spots, these little details. Here, I'm going to put a little harness on him in black. A couple little um, details where I just take solid black and I just, you know, just pretend like there's some stuff happening here. Like, here's a... Just a little bit of that. Uh, boat painting would be great. I love boat paintings. We haven't done, have we done a boat painting lately? I'll have to look at what we've been doing. And we did a turtle. Yeah, boat painting. I don't think we've done a boat painting in a while. Well, we did the one from the Greek Islands one. Well, I'll have, have to look into it and see what we're doing next week. It'll be good. It'll be good. And then three color will be a fun one too. That's a little bit too dark. Tap it a little bit. Few more leaves in here and now watch this white paint i'm going to take white paint i'm going to add a little bit of highlights here and there like on the side of things so i'm dipping into white you notice i'm not toasting the beer because it's really sour beer i better toast cheers guys cheers cheers if you guys got your shots so we're doing a little bit of here i'm just going to do a little bit here and there to kind of make it look like it's shiny in spots. I know there's a spot here that you can see through. You know, little things here and there that you can, like the harness. 
I wish I had the big picture. Let me just show you the big picture real quick. Let me just see real quick. Let's see. So see how you have a little bit of light and how it, how the the back has a few little things and there's little lights hitting here and there. So I'll do the same thing. I'll hit a couple lights here and there where um, just to kind of show the little hits here and there. And then some of the spokes were lit up a little bit. You can lit up, light up some of the spokes here. Here's a little bit there. I'm going to show you something over here. Just a little bit to give it a little bit more details and such. And so that's cool. You can off the harness maybe. Maybe there's a rope hanging. If you get too light, it's really easy to put dark over that again. And let me take off. I think that's pretty much going to be it. Underneath here doesn't look dark enough, so I'm going to put this a little bit darker. Negative paint, maybe the wheel a little bit more. What if you did really light to emphasize the ray effect? Where would I put that light? <laughs> What if you did really light to emphasize the light or white through here? I can do that too. I could put, I could wet it and I could put white in there. You know, I can do this where I can put, I can wet it again and then just take solid white and then just run white across things. And as long as it's wet and you're floating and you're good with that. That's I'm fine with that. It's just that you can't put it on really thick. You just got to take your white and float it. So you see how you can just do it like this and you can, you can white it and, a little dark there and so let's see I think that's gonna I can scrub it also I can scrub out if I feel that there's some parts I can just rub out well, let's see the thing what this thing looks like without the tape and it's always nice to see this without the tape I think we're coming close to the end here again thanks for coming by guys and um and painting and again drop it out drop it on um, the facebook group page my facebook group page and um let's see what you guys did again and it's just thank you so much for doing it it looks really really great i'm really proud of you guys doing this and doing so well it's just amazing let me go just taking this off of here and i'll show you the difference between both of these in a second i'll put them both out there let me just get this tape off of here I always pull the tape away Yep, this is white paper. This is um, just white. It's not a block of paper. It's just a Stonehenge Aqua. Though it does come in blocks and it's the same paper. So you can do it on a block. Rip away. Let me just see what, how they how they compare from the when I did this afternoon to this one. So we got dark. This is a red terracotta. This was a purple. And just a little different, you know, everybody's got their own favorite colors, so you use whatever color you'd like and make it whatever you want. Yeah, but please try to do it in one color. Um, and use your black if you want. If you have a black, and I use peach black, so that's um, just fine to use peach black. And um, But thanks again for coming by. Thanks for the donations, guys. Thanks for everything. You guys are, are just wonderful. And next week we will do two color. Two colors. And so um, I'm going to give you a little bit of example and probably one of them will be warm and one of them will be cool and we'll go from there. But until next week and um, again, if you do have um, some things you want to um, suggest that to paint, I love suggestions. <laughs> um, so I'm going to just let me go really quick through here again and ask some questions. What tape do you use? I use this soft tape it's called. And where is it? It's, a, it's called soft tape by... Um, by Holbein and you can get it uh, just type it into like Blix and type in soft tape it's a soft tape I don't actually have it here with me at the moment oh yes I do so it's a little round tape like this and it's very thin and it's kind of a plasticky tape so it avoids the um, the water going underneath it and also you can see through it so if you want to use this as like a way of um, cropping out or stenciling something you can really do that. I, I showed a, um, there's a video on my YouTube channel 
that you can use that you can take this and cut with a exacto knife and a razor and it works out perfectly to use and it also comes off a of paper really easily and it doesn't rip the paper because the stickiness is not that hard that it, it's going to peel up your paper so that's the reason i use a soft tape let's see any other questions no 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 thanks guys thanks again for coming and we will see you next week and here's with the sour <laughs> the sour acid test 